Hi there and good evening and welcome to the 44th Octoprint on Air. I'm as always your host Gina Heuske, still without a B in the name. And uh, yeah, I thought it was time to do another one of these things and uh, managed to squeeze it, just squeeze it still in into March. So here we are. Um, and yeah, so we are going to do the usual uh, uh, rundown of things. So first I will be telling you about what I've been up to, then what the next steps will be. Uh, then we'll have a quick, quick look at the stats, uh, then two Q&A uh, 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 questions that actually were handed in this week. And uh, also, of course, we will have a live chat as always for those of you who are watching this live and not just the recording that I will publish later. <laughs> and um, I'll also keep an eye on that and, and see that if anything comes up there, I will answer it. Though I just noticed that maybe I should move the mic a bit because otherwise it will be tricky to actually see the chat. So, okay, that's better. And that was my, mo my, my, my phone that just fell over. Apologies for the noise. Um, okay, so then I guess it's time to just dive right in here and start with what I have been up to. So. Uh, first of all, uh, you might have noticed some, uh, yeah, uh, some 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 uh, 1.8.0 traffic out there. So first of all, uh, the final development of, of anything that went into it, and then on uh, March 14th we had the first release candidate for 1.8.0, um, and that I uh, quickly discovered some issues with it. Uh, also, thanks to a bunch of reports from the community, which I'm very, very uh, grateful for. And uh, yeah, especially concerning the overhaul of the settings architecture. So the, the whole back end in which Octoprint stores the settings, um, which is like um, not, not just a flat structure, but, but a map of maps, so to speak, because it uh, what it does is it allows you, so, so, so you have you, you have your defaults and then on top of that you have the defaults of the plugins and then you have the config layer so the active config and all of that is is basically stacked up on each and um uh built hierarchically and it's actually in a hierarchically hier hierarchical chain map uh which is uh, how it's called and um yeah that so far i used this in a in a, in a, in a custom implementation that i actually wrote on a on a on a train trip uh, from munich <laughs> which i still vividly remember but uh yeah i got a, a nifty little pr from little little is maybe an understatement so i got a pr from flavio and uh that replaced that with an internal data structure available uh, in in um in in python which is just a chain map and flattened all the all the uh yeah the whole key hierarchy so now everything so all the the access into that uh, especially reading but also writing is now way 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 faster because it does not have to iterate through all of these layers the downside is there are still some bugs or there were still some bugs that needed ironing out here and i hope we now have caught them all with uh, rc1 and actually i think also rc2 no rc1 it was only in rc1 <laughs> Yeah, so RC2 went out on March 16th and then I left things to simmer a bit, also celebrated my birthday in the meantime, took off March 21st for that and had a lovely day with my uh, partner and my parents and also my Steam Deck which arrived on that day. And uh, yeah, then uh, after looking into things that were reported over a bit over a week on, on RC2. It boiled down to being pretty much just one problem with the G-Code viewer, which also saw some work uh, for 1.8.0. And so I prepared everything for RC3 to be pushed out on March 29th. Uh, on 28th, I wrote the change log and I also still found a bug that I uh, then fixed before rolling everything out and I went through all the update tests that I usually do. So like 10 flashes of Octopi in various states and, and, and testing if I can actually update and stuff. And then I went to bed knowing that the next day I only had to write a blog post and click release and be done with the, with the third RC. And I woke up and had to learn that overnight there had been some updates to third-party dependencies or third-party dependencies, which were now causing issues. So hooray. Um, then I spent half the day trying to figure out these issues and solving them. And uh, yeah, I did not have a lot of, a lot of uh, fun to be, to be honest. Um, uh, and uh, then uh, yeah, somewhere around midday of March 29th, I, I figured out 
stuff enough and, and made stuff work enough that RC3 could uh, be rolled out and then also still had to fix some stuff with the docks and uh, it was like I don't know it, it just truly was a day dedicated uh, dictated by by Murphy's Law and in the end it went fine and everything is now out and stuff but yeah also um just maybe give me a quick hi there in the live chat if you're seeing this because YouTube is still showing me zero concurrent viewers. Uh, the stream is live though, so it would be lovely to know that you all are actually s listening and, and seeing me, uh, listening to and seeing me and stuff. So yeah. Um, oh, also, I never know how much lag there is here, which is also a bit weird. Yeah, so I'm going to give you a few before I continue to talk because I once actually did one of these and talked for half an hour before someone said, hey, by the way, we are not seeing you because I had forgotten to click on start stream <laughs> and that was awkward. Uh, also, thank you for the confirmation in the live chat that everything is fine. Good. Yeah, I just wanted to avoid a repetition of this issue back then because that was really annoying. Like talking to yourself for half an hour, going through half of everything that you have prepared before you realize, okay, apparently that didn't work out and I have to do it all over again. That was very weird. But okay, so what else did I do? Or, or rather, just the final word to RC3. So far, no, no issues with it reported at all. So I'm hoping that uh, everything will be fine with it um, and uh, we, we, we can actually... Uh, yeah, uh, stick with the streak of the past releases, which all always needed three RCs before they went stable. Um, would be kind of fun if it uh, if it stayed this way. Actually, it would also be kind of fun if we could stay below three RCs. But hey, um, I was actually this close to simply ignoring the simple the small bug in the in the G code viewer and rolling out RC2 as a stable release, but uh, now I'm kind of glad I didn't considering uh, the third-party dependency updates that I then had to work around because they actually made Octoprint not boot up anymore, so yay. Um, but yeah, those only really could affect the maintenance branch and uh, and what is going to be 1.8.0 because they were related to stuff that got updated after switching to Python 3 exclusively. And so at least I did not have to push out a hotfix release for that either. Anyhow, what else did I do? So uh, you also might have noticed if you're running Octoprint on a Pi, which according to my stats, most of you are, that um, the um, that the Pi support plugin also asked you to update uh, and actually twice during the month of March. So on March 1st, I pushed the changes that are already teased at in the last Octoprint on Air, which was, uh, so first of all, it will now include the Octopi up-to-date build number in the environment information and that then from Octoprint 1.8.0 onwards will also be pushed into the stats, which will help me to know how many people are actually using what version of the image, because currently all I see is the Octopi version but the octopi up to date build actually updates octoprint automatically and does some other um yeah let's call it housekeeping tasks on top so it would be kind of nice to know what version exactly we are looking at if someone is reporting issues um, and also to have this information available in the stats because that also helps me to know against which versions of the image i i should test against ideally okay so that was that. Then also in this March 1st release, there was also that the, the, the check if the if the command VC gen CMD, which Octoprint uses, or rather which the plugin uses to uh, figure out if the Pi is currently experiencing under voltage overheat or some other throttling kind of problem, uh, if that is actually working and configured correctly, because so far apparently on some uh, custom self-installs, it could cause issues. And uh, and also, as it turned out, on the 64-bit RC images of the current Octopi 1.0 RC or something like this. Um, but yeah, so that is now out. And uh, with the March 1st release, I also pushed out that the default password of the Pi user is checked if it's still set. And, and actually, it checks whether the, res uh, the underlying OS, so the, the Raspberry Pi OS, detected that it is not it is still set and then once against that as well because people are told in the setup guide to change the default password but apparently they don't so hopefully that will now um, uh, 
give them another hint that this is really a really good idea to do. Okay, and then I pushed another update for Pi support on March 28th because I actually, while I was testing stuff here locally, I observed an issue with the under voltage overlay because that uh, showed you a little link to click, please, in order to learn more. And the problem was you could not actually click it, click it because as soon as you moved the mouse down into the overlay to click the link, the overlay closed. So yeah, it also turns out that I never actually put a URL behind this link. So that made it into, I think, into the March 1st release. Um, and so I quickly fixed that by, uh, yeah, telling, putting back the old way of saying here, by the way, if you need to know more about this, then please just click the button that you just hovered over because that is already a link uh, to this uh, to this FAQ entry that, that before that was supposed to be linked uh, in the in the popover. Yeah, and apparently I will probably also have to do another one uh, soon because some problem appears to exist with the uh, checkbox uh, for ignoring certain problems with the uh, with the under voltage problem thingy there. Uh, yeah, so I saw a ticket on that and Sean already said, hey, have you seen the ticket? Yes, I have seen the ticket. But this week was absolutely crazy and so far I have not had a chance to look at that. Speaking about under voltage problems, actually, I also spent a significant amount of time this week on debugging my test rig because uh, I suddenly started about two weeks ago or so, I started seeing um, under voltage uh, warnings in my, uh, yeah, in, 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 in all of the pies, but not at the same time. So the first or the second or the first and the second or the third and so something like that. It kept wandering. So it wasn't just one pie with a problem, which I had in the past, but it was actually something that looked like it was a general problem with the power distribution. So um, yeah, uh, by the way, if you have no idea about what I'm talking about here with regards to a test trick, I actually have a blog post for you um, to look at about that, uh, which I posted back in when uh, in, in July, or almost August of 2020, uh, which is automating Octoprint's release tests and where I explain why I even have a test trick and, and all of that. And um, so this is basically the test trick, though by now it has grown to four pies and uh, a slightly different setup over here. And what it does is pretty much I have these two pies here that are connected to virtual SD cards on the back that I can switch over to the, the, the Pi 4 that sits here, which is the flash host. And that thing can over SSH be controlled to um, via, a, via a hot uh, uh, pluggable or rather, a, uh, yeah, uh, via a USB switch that is below here and which these two are actually now the three, the, so the third is not in there yet, uh, are plugged into for power. Uh, so they can be switched off and on through that. And the SD cards back here can also be inserted and removed, so to speak, uh, uh, via, via software. So what I can do here is I tell the flash host to please take Pi A, this is Pi A, this is Pi B, the one that is not yet in the picture here is Pi C. Um, I take Pi A off the power, uh, then uh, mount the SD card, uh, or, or actually not mount, but just flash the SD card with a new image, then mount the SD card to some uh, provisioning, like uh, configuring the Wi-Fi, configuring a new uh, password, configuring the host name and stuff, then um, unmounting the card and plugging it back into the Pi A and then powering Pi A back up. And then also doing stuff like waiting until Octoprint is available. And once it is also updating the version on it or maybe, uh, yeah, and also configuring it so, so that I always already have run through the whole first run setup and, and all of this. So all of this I can now automate uh, through this one flash host here. And I, I also wrote, wrote myself some uh, automation script power by Fabric for that. So that is the test trick. And the problem was that these now suddenly started to report under voltage. So, um, but only during boot. So never, I, I never saw it actually happen. I only saw that it happened sometimes since boot up. And uh, no, I do not use the LED cube for testing. Uh, and that is also a very old picture and the area is looking way, way different right now because of what I will uh, continue to uh, tell you now. Um, so anyhow, uh, under voltage issue, so I figured, okay, maybe the what I'm using here is an off-the-shelf USB hub, which is rated for two amps per um, per output, which yeah is cutting it 
a bit close with a Pi 3 actually, uh, 3 amps would be better, but uh, or, or at least according to the experience in the forums, um, it turns out that 2 amps are actually fine apparently for my setup, but not necessarily if you attach peripherals. And uh, it's been running like that just fine since uh, since July 2020, but yeah, now it is causing issues. So I figured, okay, maybe this USB hub is not suited anymore. Or something broke. Maybe some some of the wiring might also be faulty. Maybe you know, like like stuff degenerates over time. And it has been online 100% for these almost two years now. So I don't know. Maybe something like that. So I unplugged everything, and especially first I started here with this with this five volt uh, uh, power supply here that powers the USB hub and is forwarded to these through the hub. Unplugged that, measured it through, looked fine, plugged it back in, started unplugging all the USB uh, connectors on the back here for the power of these things, and installed one of these USB monitoring dongle thingies in between. And guess what? Since then, I have not been able to die uh, to to see under voltage anymore. So, I don't know. But the current hypothesis is that um, maybe the there was some kind of oxidization on the on the barrel plug here, or inside the barrel plug, um, the, the female, uh, the socket. That was the word that I was looking for. I don't know. That's the only explanation I have right now. And in any case, so far I have not been able to reproduce the problem, but I got two more of these USB power monitors because it turns out that they that what I had there actually has Bluetooth. So what I did is um, a Bluetooth that you can use to evaluate the, the reading and, and, and log the reading to, into something else. So what I did here is um, I uh, got two more of these me of the meters and attached them to the other two as well. And what I have now is fancy graphs which I absolutely love because, yeah, I, I also adjusted my, my deployment scripts, uh, my, my automation to also do some logging events. And all of this is being piped into an influx DB that I have running here in my local uh, home lab. And um, now I uh, have some um, tooling running on the flash host as well, which will use the Pi's Bluetooth in order to read these three meters uh, twice per second, actually and uh, push this into my influx and then I can log it here in Grafana. And that is really nice because um, together with these events here on the, so the vertical lines here that are generated by the flash host, I can now actually map uh, the, the stuff that is happening here on the graphs uh, to the, to the, to the, to the uh, readings quite easily, but I also have a lockdown here. And so what you can see here is that earlier like an hour ago, I flashed um, uh, I, I flashed Pi C, which is like it started here. When I switched Pi C to host mode, and then when I switched it back to device under test mode, that was uh, the first time it booted after flashing. And so you see, uh, this here is actually the voltage and current of Pi A, and this is the one of Pi B, and both of them experienced some drawdown in the voltage because of the significant drawdown over here, because the, the power consumption spiked here. So the current uh, right after boot for that thing jumped up to half an amp. And that also made the power, uh, the, the voltage uh, drop down a bit, but never below uh, 5.1. And the only spike below 5.1, which actually went down to, I don't know, 4.96-ish or something, here is uh, when I plugged in the other two meters earlier today because they got delivered right around here uh, and tried to make everything work and stuff only booted halfway and so everything was a bit broken then but so ignore that please but after this you see that the power is very 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 constant and I also threw everything but the kitchen sink at it earlier uh, or rather yesterday in order to try to get this voltage below 5 volts but no dice. So currently everything is rock solid again. And uh, all of these are Raspberry Pi 3s. And what you might notice is that they are, so all of them are flashed, I think, to an Octopi 018 um, with Octoprint 180RC3. Though not Pi C, I think. Pi C is still on 173. I'm not sure though. And um, what you see is that they all 
have different a different current baseline. And that is easily explained, but it puzzled me for a bit. So Pi A actually has a USB webcam connected. Pi B doesn't have any peripherals connected at all, and Pi C has a Pi Cam connected. So hey, we now actually see how much current a Pi Cam that is running consumes. Uh, because so we have a, I don't know, we have a mean of uh, 0.256 amps over here on Pi B without anything, and 0. Uh, uh, 0.291A on uh, Pi C with the Pi Cam. So something like 40 ish milliamps maybe, which is nice, especially compared to USB webcam, which uh, eats uh, 150 amps almost. Oh, yeah, actually something like that. So, yeah. Fun things. So I'm going to keep it like that. And uh, actually, long term, I'm uh, thinking about redoing the whole um, uh, the whole power uh, distribution that I currently have because I'm frankly not too happy with using this USB thing for that. And also, everything there is now a mess because I have three power monitoring USB dongle dongles hanging in between the pies. So it's not as neatly organized as before. And actually, that kind of bothers me. So what I'm wondering now is whether I can maybe somehow sometime this year, not necessarily next week or something, but more like until the end of 2022, I might actually find the time to sit down and learn to design a PCB because uh, what I'm thinking here is it would be kind of neat to have some kind of PCB with four USB outputs that I can switch uh, via some serial uh, or maybe even via USB connection. But actually, I think serial would be would be completely sufficient and then wiring up to the flash, port, uh, flash hosts GPIO pins. Um, and uh, integrate power monitoring right into that as well so that I can switch it on and off and also get the power readings on the on the whole thing and while I'm at it also get power readings on the actual input because right now the input is some something of a black box still for me I see what arrives at the three pies at the back but I have no idea what the input is doing so it would be kind of neat to also have some monitoring there but I currently don't have any ready-made solution for that. And if I have to solve this with throwing stuff at it uh, electronically anyhow, then I can go all the way and see, look into some kind of um, custom board, maybe. I've never done that before, though. I At least not printed. I've, I've done some stuff on, on, on uh, how do you say, on perf board. Uh, but yeah. That's going to be interesting. But yeah, so this is now a little, a tiny little project, a side project, just like the initial test trick, which also was uh, started out of that um, to to maybe tackle when I need to clear my head from all the madness. <laughs> we'll see. Anyhow, so that was the test trick. And uh, now let's get back to me. And um what I also worked on, and I mentioned it a bunch of time, uh, you might be or not might not be aware that something like Octopi Up to Date exists, and I introduced that I think late last year, um, and that is basically I used something a, a, a tool I built called Customizer, which is like call it an, an, an custom Pi OS, which Octopi is based on, uh, on on yeah in in, in mini format which allows you to just take a Raspberry Pi image or some other kind of OS image mounted, modify, uh, run some modification scripts against it and then pack it up again without having to boot it because booting it is always bad because booting it generates secrets such as SSH keys and in Octoprint's case also um, uh, yeah, the SSL certificate for the for the pro for the for the web proxy and all of that. So that is bad. Um, and uh, with Customize, I can just mount stuff operate on the uh, on the US and then chain things that way and package everything up again and distribute it. So what I did last year is create Octopi opt up to date based on this. So that is basically just a set of customizer scripts that runs against the latest Octopi image and does something like update Octoprint, which was the original idea for it because uh, yeah, it kind of sucks if you flash latest Octopi and then first of all have to up upgrade Octoprint. So no longer, this is no longer the case. Um, then we ran into this issue, which I told you last time about where, where there was a new 
version of the Pi 4, I think, suddenly starting to show up in the wild against which the Octopi image, the O18, would no longer boot because they changed, I think, the power distribution chip or something like that. And that needed a firmware upgrade to work. So I also expanded uh, Octopi up to date to do a firmware upgrade and a kernel upgrade. And what I did now is what I, uh, uh, no, what I did not yet mention, I think last time I only mentioned that uh, it was causing some issues. Um, so the Raspberry Pi Imager's latest update now also allows you to do something like change the username, the default username uh, of the, um, of the Raspberry Pi image before you boot it. So for example, usually it's it's called Pi and you could now change it to something like hello or I don't know, some other kind of J random user or something like that. And in theory, that is good practice and, and a good idea to do, but in practice in Octopi that causes issues because Octopi expects stuff to run as user Pi and path locations to be belonging to the user Pi and changing this through the Raspberry Pi imager would only change the image halfway and not actually make sure of all of these other changes to also be done. So stuff was then broken and while it did boot, Octoprint did not start. And so we had some issues with that in the uh, in the support groups and so on Discord and in the forum. And uh, yeah, that started to become a bit annoying because I also noticed, so I, I, I created, I right when the, when the new Raspberry Pi imager version was released, I immediately created a big screenshot where I showed how to edit the password because you're supposed to do that, but do not change the username and uh, put a big red, do not change this or something like that. I, I can't remember how exactly I called it, but something like this, put it on in there uh, on the download page, which also contains the setup guide. And then it turned out because we, we, we asked people, why did you change the username when it clearly tells you to not change it? And the way they were like, well, I never saw this because I just flashed from the Raspberry Pi imager. And I never ever looked at the setup guide. So that explains a lot. <laughs> and it also explains a lot of instances where I was wondering why do people not read, but okay. And um, obviously it is hard to solve this issue. So yeah, instead I uh, created a little script that is also now installed as part of the Octopi up-to-date build that will check if the username has changed and if it has changed, complete the change so Octoprint can boot again. So current Octopi up-to-date images, which by the way, are the ones that you get through the, uh, or rather is the one that you get. So the stable that you get through the RPI imager will be able to uh, work with that. Um, they will detect that stuff has been changed and then do additional an additional reboot uh, after fixing everything that Octoprint uh, needs to, to be able to, to work as well. So startup paths and stuff. Also the virtual end, by the way, because if you change the name of the user, it also changes the path to the home directory, but virtual virtual end, so, so Python virtual environments apparently encode that hard, hard somewhere inside themselves as absolute paths. So yeah, the virtual end got broken. I thankfully found a solution for that as well. And yeah, that works. Apparently it works well because yeah, I also can't say that ever since I wrote this out, I've seen any any kind of problems um, uh, since then. Yeah, but obviously, yeah, the whole situation where Octoprint is actually running under the Pi user and stuff like that, that is something that I want to change. And uh, yeah, I'm actually also looking into that with help from the community already. Uh, and long term, we will have... Uh, an improved image hopefully but for now things are as they are and i'm also going to look into contributing this modification back into octopi once i find some room to breathe um but yeah that would be nice all right so that was everything that i have been up to and that has been costing me a ton of frustration <laughs> this month uh what are the next steps so as I said, we are now at three release candidates. That is actually three. You didn't see my thumb. Uh, at three release candidates for uh, Octoprint 180. So hopefully I will be able to push out the final stable release sometime maybe next week. I'm not entirely sure though if it will be next week. It might also be the week after that. 
Hi there, it's Gina from a week later than I was recording this. And yeah, I'm just chiming in to say uh, two days ago I released actually a fourth release candidate for 180 because I got a report about a little issue that we still had to fix on that. And that obviously also shifted the timeline uh, further uh, away for the stable release. So it currently looks like the stable release will rather happen uh, in the last week of April, probably, because the next two weeks are booked solidly for me with other uh, things that I've committed to do. Like next week there's PyCon, and the week after that I uh, have promised to, to give a training on something. So um, there is no time actually in the next two weeks to do a stable release. So there will be a bit of a delay there. But if you have any kind of issues that have been fixed in 180, one then you are of course free to just switch to the maintenance RC release channel and uh, check out the current release candidate because that will hopefully, based on what I currently know, be the actual final stable release. Okay, thank you. As I said, we are now at three release candidates. That is actually three, you didn't see my thumb. Uh, at three release candidates for uh, Octoprint 180, so hopefully I will be able to push out the final stable release sometime maybe next week i'm not entirely sure though if it will be next week it might also be the week after that because i because i usually want to see a certain number of printed hours and 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 users that have flashed it and uh currently we are not there yet so uh let's see where we are in um yeah maybe next tuesday or so uh the thing is also that i never release after wednesdays because uh, anything after that, and I'm not 100% uh, sure I'm able to still fix things enough by weekend. And I've shot some weekends to bids in the past before I started with release candidates and all that. that. So I've learned my lesson. No releases after the bit of the week. Okay, um, so that will be the goal. Uh, get this out of the door as soon as possible. And uh, it will be a bit more nerve-wracking this time as well, because it's not just pushing out this release and then being happy, but I also have to rigorously test uh, the whole situation that uh, has been created for Python 2 users. Because uh, if, you, if you remember, Octoprint 180 is um, the first release that is Python 3 exclusive, so Python 2 environments are not going to be able to install Octoprint 180. And um, and uh, the, um, the 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 solution there was that uh, already with the release of RC one, I redirected Octoprint instances that are still out there and running on Python two, uh, and which are actually um, up to date enough <laughs> that this mechanism a mechanism that I'm using for that works um, to a new repository uh, which is called Octoprint. Uh, legacy, I think, and on that a Python 2 branch. So any releases that are filed against this Python 2 branch, they will still get and anything else they won't. And then I obviously will not release 180 against that. Um, that branch is going to be kept Python 2 compatible and I will also have to push a final update for that actually in time with 180, which will be 173 post 1 or something. And that will um, pin a bunch more, uh, a couple more dependencies so that hopefully stuff doesn't suddenly break out of the blue if you uh, try to uh, explicitly install that version. And um, uh, and and also change the behavior of the Python 2 um, uh, next screen a bit, because right now it tells you something like, yeah, in a future version of Octoprint, Python 2's robot will be dropped. And then this version, that will, which I will ro uh, roll out then, it will say, Octoprint uh, no longer supports and stuff and you are left behind or something like that. I can't remember the precise um, wording that I used there, but I changed it a bit. So I will have to roll that out and I will also have to check this rollout and test this rollout before I actually uh, switch it live for everyone. So that is stuff that is currently a bit uh, disturbing for me. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so that just will mean more testing than usual on the stable release again. And I already did a bunch of these tests for the first RC uh, to make sure that worked, uh, to make sure that the first RC uh, would not actually show up to people under Python 2 and all that. And this, this worked out fine. 
So I hope it will just work out fine for the stable release as well, but still, yeah, it is a bit, um, as I said, it is a bit, it's going to be a bit of a more nerve wracking experience than usual, but yeah. Uh, in a nutshell, I will just be very happy when I finally have 180 out of the door because, frankly, I would like to do something else for a change again. <laughs> and most of, 22, uh, uh, most of 2022 has uh, been taken up with uh, 180 work for now. So final development throughout January and February and then uh, and then testing all the Python 2 migration stuff and preparing it in the first place and then uh, the whole month or month of March, uh, March so far has been dedicated to the RCs and um, yeah, the first part of April will actually also be. So I'm done with one eight. I just want it out of the door at this point. Yeah, and I hopefully will also be able to do some dev work, some actual dev work at some point. We'll see. But yeah, the 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 mad madness of this project continues to um, to uh, to stop my plans in that direction. Constantly, so I'm not going to make any more promises in that regard. Okay, so and now I see that I wanted to do a quick look at the stats, but I actually forgot to load the stats. So let me quickly do that because it sometimes can take a while because uh, it's a ton of data that it has to crunch just for seven days. And we are actually also going to load another screen here. Yes, I know you cannot see that. I'm going to switch you over in a bit. As soon as this thing finishes loading, which is currently taking a while, I just hope that it doesn't fail again. So the problem here is that every so the whole tracking is built on an um, on an on an elastic search uh, and 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 log stash combo and um only on one node and that node is a bit overwhelmed with this data. So yeah. Why didn't it? Yeah, we are going to ignore these. Um, and then I wanted to go here as well. Yeah. Yeah, I hope that the other one will load while we are looking at the first one. So, um, this is the usual thing, although the graph has changed slightly because I did a Grafana update recently and then also had to, for, totally forgot there's also something that happened. I, I upgraded Grafana and then I had to fix a ton of the graphs again and especially the world panel was causing me a lot of problems, but hey, okay. Um, so we see that... 180RC3 isn't even making an appearance in the overall top 10 distributions here, which is kind of sad, but usual problem. Uh, 91,392 instances the past seven days, not the past 30, the past seven. Uh, and altogether they printed over a century, so hooray, maybe. Um, RC2 numbers are going down as expected. Everything here is looking like normal as well. The Python version here didn't load because bad gateway. Yes, I, that, I really need to. That is also something that I really need to do. I need to find a solution for this whole situation. Either add an, an additional cluster or um, or actually switch it over. So I've been wondering if I can maybe switch all of this to Influx because it performs way better, but... Uh, that will require a strong restructuring of the data and I haven't yet had found the time and um, concentration to look into how to do that. But anyhow, um, so Python uh, 2 continues to hold at 14,000 instances. The last time I saw one of these, I think it was at, at below 20% at least, so there is hope still. Maybe we will see a final push uh, with the release of 1.8 and after that it will probably stagnate at around, I don't know, 10% maybe or something like that. I'm taking bets from, from the audience, by the way, because I think a lot of people will simply think, well, then I will not upgrade anymore. See what you have from that or something like this and refuse to do that. I have no idea why, but hey, whatever. I also still see instances of Octopi 1.014 uh, 
0, 014 in the in the stats. So yeah, kind of fun. Anyhow, uh, that is the overall stuff. But this is the currently more important or more more interesting thing, um, which is the individual version statistics for the 1.8.0 uh, RCs. So we see the first RC here in blue, the second in, in green, and then the third one here in yellow. And uh, we are currently looking at 300, almost 340 instances that are running RC3. All in all, 1,322 participating instances and total print time of almost 30,000 hours, which I have no idea right now how much that is in years, but I have to, or rather in weeks, maybe, I don't know. But uh, I will compile all of that data into the final release blog post as always. And um, this is the printing states. This is the print hours per day per version, uh, or, or rather per hour per version, I think. Yeah, per hour per version, per version, not per, ver you know what I mean. Uh, version distribution. So we went up to 1,100 instances of RC2 at one point. Uh, printed hours the same. Um, where they are in the world, which is kind of fun to see as well. And uh, yeah, uh, these are the Octopi versions. And this is what I mentioned. Uh, these are the Octopi up-to-date builds that are being used here. And what really surprised me, and actually um, I should switch myself off there because uh, you, you're not even seeing the numbers. Um, what really surprised me here is that... Uh, uh, there are people who actually flashed the uh, Octopi RC images instead of the stable ones. And uh, that is not a problem per se, but the numbers kind of confused me uh, because they were like over 100 for the, for the RC2 one, which, and also 55 just in the 48 hours that RC1 was live. So that made me think that maybe people... Once again, we're not reading instructions, but just clicking on whatever jumped into their face and therefore installed the image with the RC build of Octoprint instead of stable for the initial setup. And um, that was not the intention of providing the release candidates uh, as images as well by the images. So I stopped doing that now in order to prevent issues. Also, apologies. <coughs> <coughs> Not Corona, just talking for way too long and getting a way too dry throat, um, which is why I'm quickly going to take a sip of water here. But yeah, so that is why I stopped uh, pushing the uh, RC images on the RPI image as well, though you will still be able to find them in the Octopi up-to-date build. If you want to flash an image with an RC of Octoprint on it, you can do that though I honestly do not know entirely why you want to do that. Um, but still, the option is here. So yeah, mm. that was the stats. <coughs> Jesus. Um, and um, I actually shouldn't have switched you back to me because <laughs> I uh, need to uh, switch you here because we are now entering the FAQ section. Um, and uh, the FAQ, the Q&A section, sorry. Uh, and the first question was by John, which is, uh, what do you think will be the next 3D printing event you will attend in person? And I honestly don't know at the moment. Um, so the thing is, I've ruled out travel for at least the first half of, 22, uh, of 2022 altogether, which is also why I, I totally forgot to mention that. Um, so at the start of April, uh, in roughly 10 days, I will be at PyCon DE, but I will attend that conference virtually and I will also give a talk there remotely. I have no idea yet how that will work because I'm still waiting for details on that, but I sure hope it will work. And I will once again uh, talk about how to deal, uh, how to, great, I'm forgetting my talk title now. Uh, where is it? There. Uh, how to deal was correct. How to deal with toxic people. Uh, so we'll get, give that there. It's not necessarily Python centric, but I still figured I would just hand it in and see if people want to see it. And apparently they want to see it. So uh, 
I will be will give it there. Um, okay, so uh, as I said, I will do that remotely as well, and I've decided against any kind of events for the first half, um, or at least any kind of conferences with a lot of international and, 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 and just a ton of people in a very tight space and all that. Ironically, I actually have tickets for a live concert on Tuesday, and I intend to go. Uh, but I will definitely not put them put my FFP2 off my face at even once while I'm inside there. Um, and uh, so the only option that I currently have in mind for a 3D printing event that I actually might attend this year is uh, in November uh, for next because that will be in, in Frankfurt. So pretty much just a 20 minute train ride away from here. So no hotel no lengthy traveling uh, in, 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 in public transport and all of that. So that feels a bit safer still. I, yeah, I, I just don't trust the whole pandemic situation yet. Um, and uh, there's also an ed added benefit that is completely unrelated to, to the pandemic. Um, traveling costs money uh, and time let's face it. And I actually struggle a bit with justifying the cost of both, uh, especially if I'm, if I, if I have to pay it out of my own, uh, out of my own wallet. Um, and it's okay for something that is on the European continent, but anything that involves international transatlantic flights or something is something that I simply cannot commit to out of my own pocket. So, uh, this is something that I would definitely need a sponsor for. And yeah, no idea currently if there is anything uh, like that in the future. So um, we will see. Um, but yeah, so if anything at all this year, then probably for next. Uh, if there is any update to that, I will surely let all of you know uh, and uh, quite aggressively because I know how people like to know if I am suddenly ending up in their neighborhood for some reason. So we'll do that. But uh, yeah, for now, let's just keep form next in mind. And uh, anything after that will be 2023 anyhow. So yeah, and uh, no idea yet how I, or what that will be. OK, and the next question also by John. You've shown and shared a fair few things about your DIY um, home automation do you see yourself publishing another little project that could snowball into something as big as octoprint or are you trying to avoid that funny question <coughs> sorry for i have to drink another sip of water um funny question because um yeah uh, at the start of this year i actually started working on a non-home automation uh, mation related project pet project off and on currently more off than on because i'm yeah I, I simply um the work my work is currently incredibly intense and i'm not feeling like coding in my free time then as well um but yeah there is something in the works but no details for me why so the thing is this is a pet project that I'm currently working on. So, uh, and I currently do not have a ton of a ton or anything flashy at all to show. Um, and I really don't want to talk about that in public and then have said public pressure me one way or the other, like work more on this, ignore Octoprint for a bit or something like that, or possibly don't work on this. You already have Octoprint. It's my pet project and I want to decide uh, on, on, on what I do. And I don't even know if I will ever launch this publicly, but for now it's just being fun to play around with in my free time. Um, so it's something that I only work on when I find the time and also the motivation. So for example, on Sunday, I actually wanted to work on it or, or I planned to work on it and then sat down on the couch and decided, no, I'm not really feeling like it. I'm, I'm, I'd rather play some more on the Steam Deck. So that's what I did then. And I'm not going to have a bad conscience for that. Um, and um, what I get from it, however, apart from fun, is that it's also written in Python. So I'm getting some uh, a chance actually to play on a on a yeah on a on a on a, on a green field, so to speak, with current uh, frameworks and, 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 and some more mod modern stuff than what I can play with in Octoprint. 
and that is Im 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 immensely fun and also going to hopefully positively influence Octoplin in the future because it's giving me some ideas and also uh, I, I got some ideas to help for for help to, uh, for uh, for example to to switch over to some, some asynchronous uh, web frameworks like um, like uh, fast API and Starlet and stuff and uh, switch the whole Octoplin API to something like this and uh, yeah it's going to be a long 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 thing in the works but at least I now got some ideas which I didn't have before, so that is nice. And about this project specifically, the fear that I actually do have is that it will snowball, because I think it's a quiet, nifty and cool thing. Um, but it will then frankly leave me in a bit of a pickle, because I already have Octoprint, so I really do not, cannot do even more. So yeah, um, should it snowball, the current idea is that I will simply uh, say you know if you want a feature then you will have to come on board as a maintainer because no i already have a project that has taken over my life i don't need another one uh or rather i cannot justify or i cannot i cannot afford another one um so the the goal would here be would would, would here be to to really aggressively go for additional maintainers and try to uh stop it from becoming another case of Gina does everything. Well, okay, Gina does everything is a bit uh, a bit unfair because these days I do not do everything. I have a ton of help now from the community, but there were years when this was different, especially in the beginning, and I do not want to go through that again. And it has been a huge amount of uh, work and also has required a ton of patience to get where I am today with regards to collaboration. So. Um, yeah, I hope that with that, should it snowball and should I ever launch it, it will not happen uh, that way again. And it will be something where I can just leave the, leave the, leave more of the grunt work to others as well, so to speak. Yeah. Because let's face it, I'm absolutely well aware that I'm stretched thin as a sheet of paper and, um, uh, something like uh, some another thing the size of Octoprint is an absolute no-go at the moment and for the foreseeable future as well but I do not want that to keep me from experimenting and playing around with ideas and actually realizing ideas that have been brewing in my head for a long while and um, so I'm doing that and then I take a look at where that will lead and yeah so small stuff that is more like one-shot scripts or something like that. I've continued to just publish them as they got prepared over the years. Um, uh, always in a more provided as is kind of thing or way. And I will continue to do that as well, of course. But with bigger ideas, let's say like that, uh, I'm very careful, but not in a, but not completely avoidant. Let's say it like that. So, yeah. Also, maybe at some point I will come on one of these Octoprint on Airs here and go like, oh, by the way, I built. And you might want to check that out, but we'll see. Okay, so that was all the questions that we had in the, ah, sorry, in the backlog. So uh, I saw there was a long discussion in the uh, in the live chat about security on the Raspberry Pi and whether it supports SSH keys and all that. And I'm quickly just going to read through that. <clears throat> yeah, so the Pi Imager does actually support um, setting up uh, uh, um, SSH authentication through keys, so it will not even attempt to do the password thing anymore. So I do not, I do not know if it will actually disable password-based logins, or if it will just put the key that you, the public key that you throw in there, as uh, in, 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 and will just throw them into authorized keys. So I have not tried if it will also still do passwordless, uh, password-based um, logins if you do that. The problem is, we are talking about a user base here who um, struggle with the distinction between the SSH password and the Octoprint password. We are talking about a user base here who has probably never in their life touched uh, a Linux shell and who have no idea what SSH is. We are struggling with a user base that you have to tell how to uh, 
how to open up putty and that they will not see the password as they type it in. So something like, and then you will need to generate a key and then you uh, actually have to maybe also add that to the key agent. Okay, you can skip that, but it kind of loses the fun when you don't. And then you have to make sure that you keep this safe and, and that is not going to work with this audience. So forget about that. It's nice to have it as an option, but you can completely forget about that in the um in the with the audience that 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 or yeah with the people that that octo that are octoprint and octopi users these days um so yeah the idea would be to at some point actually change things so that uh, we have a custom dedicated octoprint system user that is not enabled for logging in but of course you will still need a regular user on the account in case you need to log in and check logs or something like that I could maybe imagine to, I, I don't know. I, I've actually thought about something like a web shell, but I always just end up with the problem that we do not have proper SSL termination here because of the whole situation that you cannot get trusted certificates for um, local devices because reasons that uh yeah are understandable but still make things incredibly painful you cannot tell the people that we are talking about here to just install a local ca and you can also not tell people in general that they have to own a domain in order to be able to use a local device so yeah all of that is just incredibly painful and security around that is just it's, it's especially with with something like octopi is a constant struggle between um keep it, making things secure and actually turning security into gatekeepers and i frankly do not want to yeah keep people who could actually make good use of octoprint which do not know how to do a port forward and so would only run it on a local area network hopefully <laughs> Um, I do not want to keep those from using Octoprint and I would keep those from using Octoprint if I made this whole image situation really, really complicated, but secure. So, um, yeah, it's a constant struggle and it's a constant weighing of options and it is what is making this job so incredibly, incredibly hard sometimes <laughs> because no matter what you do, you're doing the wrong thing. Either you are not making stuff as secure as you can or you are um, keeping people away and yeah neither is good so as always it's trying to find the golden path in the middle without um, compromising too much on both sides so yeah does anyone want to do my job maybe <laughs> But yeah, okay, so this is the reason why things are the way they are. And uh, I'm aware that things could also be improved. And as I said, the improvements are in the works, but they are not yet at the point where I want to go too public about them or want to go too much on the record about them because all of this takes time. And while that is something that is being worked on, as I said, by someone from the community, I still obviously also need to look at that because, yeah, I mean, I need to look at that. It's my project. So, um stuff if stuff is slow it's my fault <laughs> let's say it like that and it definitely is my fault right now because yeah it feels just like no matter what i not no matter no matter what task i i check off my to-do list uh, while i was working on it 10 or 20 more new ones popped up so hooray um anyhow i hope that um clarified this situation with the Pi Imager and SSH keys and stuff, and also why it is not necessarily a good thing to enforce that. It's obviously a good thing to maybe tell people, hey, could be something that we could add to, add to the setup guide, which apparently no one reads. Um, but uh, that is about the only thing that I can imagine is, is, is going to be useful here, because like enforcing that in any way which of course we could do. We could just disable password uh, logins immediately. Uh, we could do that, but as I said, I find it a bad idea here. So yeah. Also, thank you, Jason, for saying that uh, I'm apparently 
finding a good balance here <laughs> that means a lot uh, because i constantly have the feeling that i'm not um which is probably also part of the nature of the whole situation anyhow that was all the questions as i said from the backlog and i think also everything from the live chat at least currently i do not see anything there that still needs um that still needs covering and the church bells started just started ringing indicating it's 6 p.m over here also the co2 level is at over 1000 ppm currently <laughs> so uh it's maybe time to wrap this up after an hour uh unless you still have some kind of thing that you want to add in which case just throw it in the live chat while i'm doing the debriefing here basically so yeah um that was that i hope uh, it was interesting again and um yeah i will see that i um cut and um index that one sometime next week and throw it up on youtube publicly and also on the blog and all that um and uh, yeah and then let's see when i will actually get to releasing 180 stable will, will it be next week or will it be the week after let's see it it all depends on everyone who's testing it because if enough people are testing it i will actually be able to release it next week but otherwise <laughs> but two weekends with another rc are probably better than one anyhow so no problem there all right um, the next one probably in something like a month plus minus uh, more plus than minus two weeks potentially you know the drill and as always i will also throw the appointment up on patreon and on github sponsors and with that being said thanks for being here happy printing and i uh, i really hope to see you next time again bye bye <laughs>